Hey everybody, it's Jeremy. Welcome back to EA Tetragrammaton, where we are playing Ur. This is turn 182. Let's jump into things. Okay, so uh, we've got a couple of reports that we're going to go over before we get into the various different things. So first we have a report from Monarch Woods. Um, a Flames from the Sky hits us, kills a Vampire Lord, a couple other units. Unfortunate. And then we have a dire portent from Relay as they put up Maelstrom. And this is a steal, I think. I can't... <coughs> so I, can't, I actually can't remember. I, have to, I haven't looked at the globals in a couple turns. I can't remember if Lunka put up Maelstrom after all my stuff dropped or if he put up Galegate. So I don't, I don't remember what this is replacing but basically relay has replaced mail has taken a spot with maelstrom um but it didn't replace anything big like it didn't take out astral corruption astral corruption it didn't take out um get our gift of health it didn't take out um the arcane nexus right so uh none of those are things that we particularly care about <clears throat> all right so those were the two reports aside from that we had a couple of assassinations or attacks, right? Uh, we had an Earth Elemental kill a Vampire Lord, unfortunate. Uh, we had another Arrow strike a Vampire Lord, but he survived. And then we got Mind Hunted, but survived. So two for three on our assassination attempts. Um, and then we had two horror attacks. A Gudu got attacked by two horror mantises and died. And then our god got attacked by a mind slime horde. So this shouldn't this shouldn't be any. Mind slimes are definitely low tier enough for our god to take on, generally speaking, without much issue, the majority of the time. So it comes in and pop pop. So that's good. Uh one and one on our horror versus. And then we have uh some battles against relay. We attacked in Divine Ocean. And this is just us raiding around with our Tartarian Spirit. There are three Wraith Lords here, so let's go ahead and watch what happens. Um, we know what we're doing. But there are these three Wraith Lords. Um, a four death, three death, and three death Wraith Lord. And I can't remember, are Wraith Lords... Um, five Inspector... I know the four death is a empowered one, but I can't remember if the others are as. No, the others they come as uh, death three. So <clears throat> that one wraith lord has been empowered, which is kind of interesting. They don't have any gear or anything like that, so probably going to be unable to do too much. Looks like they're just on um, Horde of Skeleton spam. So our Tartarian is going to easily be able to handle any of this without really any issue. Yep. The Province Defense, please. The Wraith Lords move forward. And actually, if they weren't doing Decay, if they were doing like Drain Life... That could potentially do... Can you do Drain Life? Or is Drain Life a forecast? Might be the reason why. Yeah, Drain Life is a forecast, so that's why they can't do it. That's fair. But this one could do it if he got closer. And does... Ah, oh, there we go. There's a Drain Life. Nice. So Drain Life can actually zap me, but one Drain Life is not enough. They would need, like, two or three consistent Drain Lifes. Or Drain Lifers, basically. And even then, that might not be enough. This guy's just really pretty tanky. So we win there. Easy peasy. And... Then the next up is we are attacked in Ocean of Our Lord. And this is really just Relay taking their their land back from us. We, we're, you know, we're just trouncing around in their land. 
raiding, and they're just counter raiding. So this is nothing. Um, so one and one on our fights against Relay, and then we have a bunch of fights against Lunka. So um, Hallwoods is the one that we probably really care about, plus the fortress attack. So we'll go ahead and pass through these and see what we got. So simple raiding in Fever Fins, we lose. Same in Belagor, we lose. <clears throat> same in Yellow Caves, but we win. Um, same in Gladewood, a little bit larger of a, an undead party, we lose there. What of Many Paths um, is, again, just raiding, but it, interestingly, there's a sh shaman here, right? <clears throat> so the shaman comes in and casts Body Ethereal on itself. Cast Body Ethereal twice, once hitting the Vampire Lord, once hitting itself. And I don't know what the rest of the plan is. We don't get to see what the rest of the plan is because at that point we're routed. But I'm kind of I'm kind of interested what this shaman's doing, you know. So we got that in the Wood of Many Paths. We've got Bakar, where we get pinged by an adventure, and we have a couple of these this turn where Lunk is just pinging us, um, you know, doing the little tax to make sure we're putting uh, putting points into our provinces, uh, where we we bounce the one in Bakar. Bounce the one in Old Man Mountains. Bounce the one off of Ur. Um, and bounce the one in Histria. So we win all of those. And then we have a battle in Hall Woods. So we're not expecting a victory here. Um, this is a large contingent of undead that we sent in. Again, we're not expecting to win. Because they have... Blanca has more vampire lords and liches in this army than we do in this, right? So adding, we lose just based off of that, right? But adding in everything else, obviously we're going to lose. What we're trying to do though is maybe make a dent in some of this chaff, maybe kill some of the long dead, and uh, also hopefully drain some gems. We got a gem on this golem back here. We got some air gems on this Mandeha, right? Um... There's actually a whole lot more. Cool. We've been kind of like hitting him for gems repeatedly. Uh, gems on this crystal mage, so there's that. I kind of try to keep an eye on what's getting cast here. So we get a communion. That's good. Divine blessing goes up. Anti-magic goes up, so we do use the gem there. That's cool. I'm assuming these rock tapatas also communioned up. No, maybe not. I'm an earth power into the communion. I don't really know who his communion is, though. A lot of hordes of skeletons. Power of the spheres. Okay, so we used, used that. He's going to do, like... Um, Army of Lead, Army of Gold, something like that. Probably Army of Gold, I would assume. Army of Gold, there we go. Alright, so that's good. We just used at least the anti-magic and all of the gems from this Crystal Mage. Um, so if he attacks this turn, that's going to be probably still lost for us. But, you know, we're, we're doing what we can, right? Um, oh, those Storm Demons are just crushing us. So good. Storm Demons are so awesome. Okay, and... There's so much chaff generated by the Horde of Skeleton spam, so no idea whether or not we actually did damage to the chaff there. Um, lost, obviously, all of these, and... Uh, not really. We did a little bit of damage... 31 out of 307 is not much, right? So, kind of unfortunate. He's still got plenty here. Uh, and if he attacks in... If he attacks Hallwoods, he, we're, we're pretty much dead. Notably, though, there is no additional attack this turn, and the fortification's been breached. So we'll talk about that more here in a second. 
There's a battle in Koenberg, where we have another um, army raiding around. And then battles in Flower Meta Fortress, Tessafon, and Ol Olentova. We don't have defenses in any of these, so we're not gonna we're not gonna watch them. But uh, a force along with some undead force along with some air elementals in Flower Meta Fortress. Um, a crystal mage and some liches in Tessafon. We lose that as well. And then um, Olentova. We do have a smaller force here with an Enkidu Elder, but not enough to stand up against seven liches and nine vampire lords. That's crazy. Okay. Unexpected event in Ur. Misfortune 3. Fuck. And then we're under siege in a whole lot of places. We get a whole lot of reformations. Let's talk about what we are doing this turn. This turn's going to be probably pretty quick, but we're going to... Because we don't have a lot of actions, but we are going to talk pretty heavily about a few things. We are raiding and counter-raiding around a little bit here and there with some vampires, um, etc, etc. None of these are big moves, because we just don't have a lot to be doing big moves for. But there is... Very specifically... So the fortification in White Forest is now um, breached. And the fortification in Hall Woods is breached as it has been for several turns now. Um, we have seen the army in Hall Woods. We know it is strong enough to defeat this army probably, right? But he has declined to attack us on... A couple turns now I think because he is trying to reinforce he's trying to bring in things you can see he's taken Olentova now right um, there's a force there that we know can reinforce right another 200 or so um, so my assumption is is he's just trying to he doesn't want to just throw himself in there and have a bad fight and then have to bring an entire another army across etc etc et he's just taking his time which is wise to a point um, and then over in White Forest, right, there's, we're not 100% sure what's here, but there's a big-ass army here. So that's, uh, that's a problem. We, I've been talking about doing this for a couple turns now, but this turn we are going to play, we're gonna, we're gonna try to play a trump card, right? We, we are going to take a big gamble because we basically don't have any other real moves left right we are holed up in the various fortifications that we have those fortifications are slowly but surely no actually not very slowly honestly <laughs> they're being taken pretty rapidly um and we're basically down to our six thrones and our capital so and i guess uh uh pangea <laughs> which is just kind of left alone on its little lonesome over here you may notice that all of our gems are gone, and that is because all of our gems have been alchemized for a single cast. We do not have any any additional rituals or forging that we're doing this turn. We have one, one ritual that we are casting this turn in an effort to pull the rug out from under Lanka. And that is Purgatory. But if you're not aware of what Purgatory is, I believe it's in Thaumaturgy. Yeah, so Purgatory is a 60 base fire gem, um, 6 fire cost, global enchantment. Holy fire will strike undead enemy creatures in the god's dominion. The more powerful the dominion, the more undead will be killed. So that's the, that's the description. The tag is all hostile undead beings, all hostile undead beings have Dominion times 10% chance of being hit by 18 armor-piercing fire damage. If we, and this is a big if, mind you, if we can get Purgatory up, then the... What is this? Some odd... 220-ish undead here, right? Well, not 220-ish. There's 51 Storm Demons. So 200-ish to 180-ish, right? Undead here. They're all dead, right? They're all dead. All these in Olentova, they're all dead. 
all of the undead on White Forest, right? All these long dead Bandar, Marcadas, Venara, they're all dead. All of the um all of the liches, they're dead. Right? All of the vampire lords, they're dead. And the reason why is because in these locations and in most of my empire, we have very strong dominion. We have 10 dominion. So, if we are able to get purgatory up, there is going to be a dominion times 10% chance. So, 100% chance in most of these provinces for every undead, every hostile undead, that's important, every hostile undead to take... 18 armor piercing fire damage and that will kill the vast majority of the undead that are roaming around our lands it'll kill all of the long dead because they all have less hp than that right um, it will kill the liches and it will kill the vampire lords because they have susceptibility to fire they all have fire weakness right um, so it's definitely going to kill them. Things like Wraith Lords, probably not, right? Um, they have too much HP, etc. Uh, but with a single cast, potentially, we could wipe out the majority of the armies in our Dominion. And as we scroll out, you can see our Dominion covers a pretty big fucking area. So... This is a big if, obviously, right? Um, just getting the cast off, because we know it can't beat our Gift of Health, right? We know it probably can't beat the Arcane Nexus. We know it probably can't beat Astral Corruption. So, out of the seven, there are three that it basically automatically fails against, okay? The other four, Maelstrom, Stellar Focus, Well of Misery, Eternal Pyre are all questionable. Maelstrom just got put up and took something else over. So it probably has a decent cast on it, right? So Maelstrom is probably a no-go. Um, and that leaves Stellar Focus, Well of Misery, and Eternal Pyre. Actually, I think Well of Misery... Did, did he steal Well of Misery from us or did we have Well of Misery up? I can't remember. Um, regardless, right, like, these, these other three might have a low cast because Lanka put at least Stellar Focus and Eternal Pyre up immediately after I lost them. So those might just be very low casts. He might he might not have a lot to he might not have a lot invested in them. That being said though this is this is a crapshoot. It's a it's 100% a Hail Mary if this does not go off, if this purgatory does not make it through, we're dead in like, we're, well, not dead, but we're game over in a turn or two, right? Maybe three, as he crashes into Hall Woods and White Forest and takes those thrones. Now, White Forest does have a fairly decent garrison, right? Um, not crazy or anything like that, but it's fairly decent. But it's still going to die to the same tricks that we've had to deal with in the past, right? Um, freaking Rigor Mortis, for example, will just destroy this. Uh, we can do stuff like try to... Try to do things like... Um, fuck, what's it called? The fire one. Flamestorm, right? So we could try to do things like Flamestorm to hopefully drop the rigor mortar rigor mortis caster and things like that um but we also have a very good chance of deleting our own army in doing that still that is an option but even in that situation that's just delaying the inevitable if this purgatory does not go up we're we're drowning at this point right um we are out of gems our income is incredibly low right 8 17 or 17 water gems and 23 nature gems are kind of like the big ones um so 
it will take us... It, it will be all but impossible for us to fuel large amounts of gem expenditure. However, if this purgatory goes off, it's still not a big guarantee of success, obviously. And the reason for that is, is so, so first of all, we have to get lucky that the purgatory actually works. Okay, so there's that. The second is, is even if the purgatory works, most likely, especially if you if you think from like a gym standpoint, um, he's had Eternal Pyre up for quite a while now. So it's very likely that he's just going to be able to go, oh, he put a pur purgatory. And I delete most of his armies in my territory in that turn. And then he goes, okay, well, that's annoying. Here, let me just overcast purgatory really, really big for myself. Right? So, and there's no way I can compete with that. I don't have the income. Um, and he does. So, most likely, that is a... That's a... It, it's not going to do much. However, if he doesn't have the ability to dispel Purgatory or overcast Purgatory, then then things start to kind of open up. Because if he cannot raid us, or if he has to take a couple turns to make Lich Gear or Fire Resistance Gear for his Liches and Vampires, right? Because he still has to deal with Astral Corruption, so he has to be careful about that. If he has to take a couple of turns, one, they all die. Two, he has to take a couple of turns to gear them out. It's going to be a while before he can get us raided back down. And then two, if he, if he can't get rid of Purgatory... Um, which I'm assuming he can, um, then if he can't, he's going to have a really bad time getting into our lands with anything that is undead-based, right? All of these long-dead armies are just going to evaporate as they try to come into our territory. What this means is, if we get Pur Purgatory up, and if he cannot take it down quickly, then we have the ability to raid our lands back, and go from where we're at right now, where we have very little territory and a lot of dominion, to back to our territory being controlled inside of our dominion, and then we get all of that gem income back. And we get a little bit of actual income back, though most of our lands are pretty withered at this point. Um, so that's a big deal. I don't think it means that we win the game in the long run, right? Um... But I do think it could be a way for us to mess with Lanka, um, go down, fighting, etc. So that is the play that we have. There's nothing else that's uh, really going on this turn aside from, like I said, slight uh, counter rating. So that's going to be it. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.